Hello out there in Radio Land. This is Michael. This is the Street Preacher's Corner Podcast, the podcast that rejoices in the truth. Well, you can see the title, so you can see we might be in for a, a bumpy ride. I, I want to say some things, though. I really do try here on the corner to keep the axe grinding to a minimum. It's not particularly effective. It's not particularly a good spin, uh, 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 use of my time, and not and by extension, not a very good use of your time. But sometimes a subject presents itself that is so illustrative, that illustrates so well a larger problem with the body of Christ that I think it's worth, it's worth looking at. And that's, uh, one of these subjects is a man named Chris Kratzer. Now, I have to tell you, uh, I did not know who Chris Kratzer was until very recently. Uh, my wife, who actually has a social media presence of some kind, uh, had uh, she was on this social media thing with this other homeschool mom that we know, and this homeschool mom that we know, Who's you know is a good enough lady? Um, she's never done nothing to me. I'm not I'm not here to bash her or, or nothing. But she has um, a a a well established problem in her house, and the well established problem in her house is that one of her children that lives under her roof is an open practicing homosexual. And um, now I mean, just me saying that you probably have some idea where I'm going from here, right? I mean, this is not this is not ground we've never covered before. And let me just say uh, about this mom that I get it to a certain extent within my own house. So we've had, you know, sin issues come up and uh, we've had to decide how to deal with them. And sometimes people take a really strong stand on something until it shows up at their house. And then they don't take a strong stand on it. And I understand that is a very human impulse to, uh, to uh, it's a very human uh, temptation to cave when it's one of your own. I understand it. I understand why that happens. Uh, But to do so is to be unfaithful to Jesus Christ and unfaithful to the Scriptures. Sin can be addressed with grace, and it should be. Sin can be addressed with compassion, and it should be. But sin can never successfully be addressed with tolerance. And so there's that. So this mom had this issue in her house, and she wanted to have a foot in both worlds. She wanted to take a strong stand for Jesus, or she wanted to convince herself she was taking a strong stand for Jesus, and she also wanted to extend an olive branch towards her daughter and the the, the lifestyle that her daughter had gotten caught up in. Um, and so she began to, in my, as far as I can tell, she began to seek out... Um, a voice that sounded sympathetic, specifically a voice with some spiritual street cred. In other words, when she went out to find somebody who who had a position on this topic that she could quote or post or follow or whatever, she didn't find the loud, you know, 300-pound lesbian foaming at the mouth, uh, screaming at the sky lady and say, oh, look, this is, look, this wise thing this weirdo said. She didn't say it, so she went looking for somebody that would, you know, a sympathetic voice, but with like some spiritual credentials. She was looking for a pastor. She was looking for someone that spoke uh, uh, with authority and would also agree with her. And once again, that is a very human thing, and that's just how it goes. So she found an ally in Chris Kratzer. Now, Kratzer's website, you can look this up, it's chriskratzer.com, C-H-R-I-S-K-R-A-T-Z-E-R.com. It says he is a pastor and author of 25 years, which is a very strange way to word that. Uh, He claims to have, quote, transitioned away, now that's a strange, that's an interesting choice of words, to have transitioned away from, quote, conservative evangelicalism and and uh, discovered a faith that, quote, doesn't require one to lose their mind, heart, and faith in the process. I don't even know what he means by that, but we'll come back to that. Uh, He says he is a, quote, voice for the spiritually oppressed, that they may know that they are loved, affirmed, and not alone. Once again, we're going to come back to these words. It also says that he calls out, quote, the evils of the modern conservative Christianity, unquote, 
And, friend, if that's what he was actually doing, I promise you, I would be on this man's side. I would be one of his biggest cheerleaders. There is plenty of, of, of things to call out. But as you'll see, that is not what he's doing. We'll get back to that. It says here in his bio that he is married with four kids and that uh, his bio ends with this tagline. He's got like this little slogan that he uses a lot. And the slogan is, Grace is brave. Be brave. Right, wait, let me say it a little better. Grace is brave. Be brave. Now, in case you're looking for some Chris Kretcher merchandise, he has an online store where you can buy a, a t-shirt that makes reference to female dogs and prison rape. Um, you know, there are certain phrases that just mean things. I mean, I didn't get saved until I was 21. And when you say certain things, I, you, may, you may not know where that came from, but I know where they came from. And so he sells t-shirts, like I said, that make references to female dogs and prison rape. That's special. Uh, Pastor Kratzer will also sell you a copy of his book, Stupid Stuff Heard in Church. And it's not stuff. I changed the title. I mean, really, the, the more you look into this guy, what a little peach Mr. Kratzer appears to be. So in, in my discussions about Kratzer, um, I believe in quoting a man at, at length. I believe in looking what a man says about himself. So we will be uh, quoting him a lot. And by all means, go to his website and check behind me and read the relevant passages for yourself. I would not want to be accused of taking any of this out of context or using him as a punching bag to grind my own axe. But according to Kratzer, uh, at some point in his past, uh, as a pastor, he concluded that the great sin besetting God's church isn't the list in 2 Timothy 3. You know, uh, in the last days, perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, traitors, heady, high-minded. All that, that list in 2 Timothy 3, he looked around at the church and he decided that wasn't the big problem. That wasn't what we should be concerned about. That's not what we should be worried about. That's not what should be being addressed from the pulpits and the keyboards and the pens of the pastors of America. Now, the great sin of the modern church, according to Chris Kratzer, is intolerance. Now, if you have heard my coverage of, uh, I did, a, I did a, a, a podcast called Coming of Age um, as an LGBTQ Southerner, and I went through a report that uh, this organization put out about what it's like to grow up to be a homosexual in the South, and you, you, if, you've, if you've heard that podcast, uh, you will be a little bit ahead of the game here because, because you, will, you will already know how this game is played. Uh, by Kratzer and people like him. Apostates and reprobates play with words. They stretch them and they twist them and they 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 contort them. They form them into weapons and then they bludgeon their enemies with them. And that's what uh, the that community is known for. If you've spent any time around them, if you've read anything behind them, uh, they will try to. Um, um, What's the word? Um, not not assimilate. There's a word, appropriate Christian terminology as a way to assuage their conscience about the way they live. And that's just how it goes. But I'll give you an example. Uh, one we've already mentioned, I think. So in his bio, this is Chris Kretzer's bio, chriskretzer.com. Uh, his bio says he wants the spiritually oppressed. Now we can stop right there. He wants the spiritually oppressed. So who are the spiritually oppressed. Can you take a Bible and can you show me, Mr. Kratzer, that according to the, because there is an oppressor and he does oppress people. So, Mr. Kratzer, can you take a Bible and show me who you mean when you say the spiritually oppressed? Who's oppressing them and how? Now, he doesn't answer that here in his bio, but he, he does address it in some, other, in some other writings. And according to Kratzer, the oppression doesn't come from the world, the flesh, and the devil, it comes from the intolerant church. Well, we'll get there. We'll get there. Uh, Kratzer says he wants the spiritually oppressed to know that they are loved, affirmed, and not alone. So the question you have to ask yourself is, what in the world does he mean by that? Loved, affirmed, and not alone. Like I said, we went through this uh, LGBTQ Southerner thing. What we found is that they used words 
uh, that don't mean what those words mean. And here Kretzer is using words that don't mean what they mean, the way he's using them. Do you, do you know who's loved? I mean, think about this. He, he wants these people to know they're loved, affirmed, and not alone. Do you know who already has that? Do you know already has that? Who, do you know who can know that they're loved? Do you know who, who's affirmed? Do you know who's never alone? Not the sodomite parading up and down the street, that's for sure. These are all benefits enjoyed by born-again Christians. And Cratcher wants that for the spiritually oppressed in the homosexual community without the benefit of the new birth. He wants to, if you're saved, he wants to take what's yours by birthright of the new birth, and he wants to make it available with smooth words to people who are in rebellion against God. And he wants to do that while calling it compassion. But according to Kretzer, we are the problem. People like me and maybe people like you. You know, it just seems to me I've heard this song before. Anyway, so another interesting little nugget about Kratzer is that he is a pastor who doesn't go to church anywhere. In fact, he wrote an entire article called, um, Here's the Real Reason I Don't Go to Church. And he lists his reasons, and roughly they're, uh, he says, all the judging and the hating and the violence and the bigotry and the hatefulness. So I have to assume that when Kratzer was a pastor, there was a lot of, uh, you know, judging and hating and violence and bigotry and hatefulness in his church. And that's why he doesn't go to church anymore, because of all the, Hatefulness and violence. And was there, were there fist fights going on at Kratzer's church? And shouldn't the, shouldn't the response to that for be for him as the pastor to address those issues and call out that sin? It's very, very strange stuff. Was there a lot of hate at the church where he was at? Was there a, was a lot of bigotry at the church where he was at? Well, see, to me, as the pastor, a pastor of 25 years, according to his bio, he was in a prime position to address those issues. And instead, he gets out of church. Strange, strange stuff. So I'll read you a quote here. You're the reason I don't go to church. It's not that you aren't perfect. It's that you kind of think you are. You live like you have all the answers. You live like true. your truth is the only one. And the world won't be better until everyone is just like you and you hold all the seats of power. So let me ask the obvious question then. Isn't that what Chris Kratzer wants? I mean, doesn't he want the whole church to be as tolerant as him, as defined by him? Doesn't he want the whole church to affirm the spiritually oppressed like he does? It's always odd when a man accuses you of the thing that he is doing. But you'll see that happens over and over again in the ministry of Chris Kratzer. In his article, and, and I swear this is the title, Why Conservative Evangelical Christianity is the Worst Evil Ever Manifested Upon the Earth. That's the article. He says, people like me, and maybe like you, are poison. That's a quote. Peddling a, quote, cosmic lie. The, quote, spiritual veil to an empty life. Quote, a cancer claiming to be the cure, addicting all its adherents to a hope that is no hope at all. My, my, my. He doesn't appear to be a fan. He says, I, and maybe you, quote, are the Antichrist. <laughs> oh, Chrissy boy, what are you going to do? What are we going to do with you? We are the wolf draped in sheep's clothing, the devil dressed in holy garments, and, wait for it, Wait for it. Nazis. Yes, he played the Nazi card. How tolerant of him. In his article, My Evangelical Friend, Why Won't You Just Be Honest? Wait a minute there. You, you just, you, you wait a minute there, Skippy. You just called me a Nazi. Well, you don't get to then turn around and say we're friends. And you just want to help me out. Anyway, uh, 
Uh, let's think about that just for a second. Just, just, just think about this title, okay? The, the, the Catholic Inquisition, for example, just went on for 600 years and killed millions of people, right? Islam has killed millions. The Holocaust, the Bataan Death March, the, the Rape of Nanking, all that is less bad than conservative evangelical Christianity. I mean, really, Kratzer? Really? Really? We're worse than the Irish potato famine. We're worse than the chemical warfare that the Iraqis uh, uh, visited upon the Kurds in the 90s. We're worse than all that. Chris, if you consider decaf, but I digress again. So in this article, uh, the uh, you know my evangelical friend, why won't you be honest? Kretzer writes, you kind of enjoy the evangelical feeling that you're better than others, more favored, and uniquely in step with God. You liken the rush of the us versus them battle. You find security and self worth in having a spiritual justification to set yourself above and apart from others. End quote. Now, if you're not familiar with this technique, dear friends, dear listeners, this is what we call projection, where a man has an issue and he thinks you have that same issue. You are doing the th- or he is doing the thing that he says you are doing. I know hundreds of people that Kratzer would consider conservative evangelicals, and I and we've got our problems. We've got problems with pride. We've got problems with carnality. But I don't know anybody that honestly, honestly, as 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 a matter of just the way they look at the world, I don't know any conservative evangelical that looks at that guy in the gutter and says, I'm better than him. Some of us were the guy in the gutter, after all. Now, let me throw this out as a caveat. Uh, a man who... A man who is faithful to his wife is a better man than a man who is unfaithful to his wife. A man who gets up and goes to work is a better man than a man who lays in bed all day long and lets his family go hungry. A man who puts in an honest day's work is a better man than a man who steals. We could go on and on and on. So, so in some ways, yes, if you are living a life in accordance with God's principles and trying to live a life pleasing for God, in some ways you are better than a person who is not trying to do those things. But I don't know anybody that looks and says, I am inherently better than that guy right there because, and I get some kind of kick out of it. But what you'll see over and over again in the writings of, of, of Chris Kretzer is that he thinks he's better than you. If you're not as tolerant as him, if you're not as accepting as him, if you're not as affirming of, 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 of perversion as he is, He's better than you. He also says, in that same article, Unwrap from the evangelical burial clothes that mummify your soul. Listen to the cries of your heart to be free. There's no shame or condemnation. End quote. Now, I I honestly, folks, I'm a pretty smart guy. I don't know what he's talking about. There, there, there is no condemnation in Christ Jesus, and Jesus Christ is the one that has sets men free from the burial clothes of, of, of whatever. Jesus does that, not Chris Kratzer. Uh, quote, you wonder why you have to constantly turn off your brain to make sense of the teachings of your faith. End quote. Yeah, I don't tell you, Chris, uh, we don't have that kind of problem around here. Uh, let's see, here's another quote. You wonder how truthful and secure a faith can be if it needs to ban books, gain political power, and condemn those it deems to be the enemy in order to preserve and prosper its belief. No, Chris, that's not us. That's your crowd. That's the perverted community. That's the homosexual community. That's the sodomite crowd that does those things. Your crowd bans the Bible. Your crowd uh, gets street preachers thrown in jail. Your crowd shouts down any opposing voices. Your crowd uses the government to pressure and squeeze and shut up and condemn people that you disagree with. 
We don't do that. You do that. You and your magical friends in the rainbow crowd. Now, I could go line by line by line through Kratzer's stuff, but I think I've made my point. Chris Kratzer has, for whatever reason, thrown in his lot with people, specifically atheists, skeptics, sexual deviants, who oppose biblical Christianity. He plays the pastor card while saying things that no pastor, no real pastor, would ever say. And then his little tagline, he says, Grace is brave. While saying that, he takes every opportunity to accuse and name-call people like me from the safety of his keyboard. Chris Kratzer uses words like love and grace and compassion when he actually means the exact opposite. He is preaching a lifestyle that brings men, and men into bondage. He is preaching a false gospel in which God is this big lovey-dovey teddy bear that accepts everybody and affirms everybody and that the greatest thing, the greatest sin that you could ever commit is the sin of intolerance. He claims to love the sodomite community, but he won't tell them the truth. Do you know who really loves those folks? People that pray for them. People that allow themselves to be abused in order to get the chance to preach to them. People that risk their lives to get them the gospel. That's who loves them. Chris Kratzer does not. Because if he loved them, he would tell them the truth. Instead of selling them smooth words. So, Chris Kratzer is a graceless coward. If he were standing right in front of me, I'd say the same thing. I don't know how he got here. He's got a wife and four kids, so I'm assuming he's straight. Although we've seen this road before, haven't we? We've seen guys that, that leaned real hard into the into the sodomite community, then all of a sudden it came out that secretly for years they had this other thing going on. So I don't I have no reason to suspect that Kratzer is 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 aligned with that. He has a sort of problems in his life. But if it came out tomorrow, I wouldn't be surprised. But like I said, I don't know how he got here. I mean, maybe he got tired of taking a stand. Maybe he got tired of being called names by God's enemies. But you know, that's not the first time. You're not the first person it's ever happened to. I mean, the example I always think of, and I haven't gone through a whole lot of verses here. Uh, I've been trying to cover his, you know, his his uh, his his theology without just you know. But um, one of the examples you can look at is Nehemiah. Nehemiah got called names and falsely accused by God's enemies. And what he didn't do is go take the side of God's enemies. He stayed on the wall. Now, I'm going to close with one more quote from the article, Here's the Real Reason I Don't Go to Church. Yes, I don't go to church. Here's the quote. Quote, yes, I don't go to church. Thanks for the concern. Instead, I'm finding Jesus in all the places you told me I wouldn't. I'm meeting Jesus in all the people you send to the curb, and I'm experiencing Jesus in all the faiths you say aren't true. Now, that sounds cute and cuddly and, and ecumenical and accepting and whatever, but it doesn't make, it doesn't, doesn't make any sense. If... Jesus is just one of many paths to the to the Father. And all these other religions are equally true, and all these other religions have some element of, of the truth in them, and a person can find God in all these other religions. Really? So, Baalite worship. When they were slaughtering babies, was that a path to God? Oh, well, no, not those guys. Not those guys. Oh, okay. How about the uh, Aztecs when they were, oh yeah, slaughtering babies? Was that a path to God? Was it was was Jesus somewhere in all that? What about Islam? What about rampant uh, uh, medieval kind of uh, Roman Catholicism? Jesus Christ said, "I am the way and the truth and life. No man comes unto the Father but by me." And you cannot say, "Oh, I looked at all the religions of the world, and they're not the same because they're not the same." And if you think so, you are either an idiot or a liar.
Actually, there might be a there might be a third option. The third option might be that you haven't really thought it through, that you haven't really looked at what the different religions of the world teach and compared to the Bible. But for crying out loud, if you are a pastor, quote unquote pastor, for twenty five years like you claim you've been, surely this has come up. Surely he's witnessed to somebody who believed, for example, that Jesus and Satan were brothers, and that if you're a good enough servant of the organization that someday you'll be a god and get your own planet you can make you can populate with babies from your spirit wives surely he's talked to somebody like that okay okay i'm putting the axe down i will let you judge that last little note let me i'm going to read it again though because it is, it is worth reading again i don't go to church thanks for the concern instead i'm finding jesus in all the places you told me I wouldn't. Like where? Like where? Chris, are you going down to the bar and finding Jesus? Are you going to the mosque and finding Jesus? Sorry. I'm finding Jesus in all the places you told me I wouldn't. I'm meeting Jesus in all the people you send to the curb. Who are these people? Where is this curb? And I'm experiencing Jesus in all the faiths you said aren't true. There you go, folks. Chris Kratzer, the pastor who doesn't go to church, the pastor who says there are many roads to heaven, the pastor that says Jesus is everywhere and everything. He's a clown, he's a clod, he's a coward. And if you see him, tell him I said so. This has been Michael. This has been the Street Preacher's Corner podcast. And man, am I glad I got that off my chest. Aren't you? All right, well, I will see you again on the other side.